Hi, everybody. So today, David, Julianne, Ray, and I are all going to talk about frequency. And we're going to talk about music. And maybe we'll get a little color in there <laughs> as well. But um, we just want to talk about how that pertains to what's happening right now. So another thing that's happening that I don't think I've announced on the channel is most people are very close to achieving most awake people are very close to achieving their crystalline body. So you're very close to hundred percent and that's going to also open up new gifts and things for you. So, and also health, but we're going to talk we about know? all of that today. Will we feel it when it's, when it's fully active or we feel it or will we know, how will we know? Um, you won't necessarily feel it. You'll start to feel better after you feel really bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's the final push, like it's very exhausting. Um, but once you get to the hundred, I think as your skin, you know how we go through that skin shedding, you know, as human beings, um, mm. how the layers of skin like shed off, mm. eventually you will start to sparkle a bit. And then you'll know for sure, but also you're going to feel healthier and healthier as time goes on and your gifts are going to get bigger. So. Yeah, I think, I think that's the um, best way to describe the feeling of it is like, mm -hmm. oh, I all of a sudden feel like happier and lighter and fresher and things are just easier and smoother and yeah. That's how I would describe it. Mm -hmm. How long would the bad feeling last for, roughly? Oh, well, for a lot of people, it's been going on for a long time, but there's been like a push. And I would say it was like a week and a half of feeling really bad, like really tired, really exhausted. But a lot of that also depends on what kind of shape you're in, too. Yeah. You know? Have you had any tiredness, David? No, I used to get lots of migraines and stuff. I had one just before the full moon last week or the week mm, before. Yeah. So that I used to get them all the time for, for no reason, really. You know. um, yeah. So the um, also the illnesses pop up. The old illnesses. So they'll come to the surface so they can be gotten rid of basically. So it's also like okay. a detox and that's why you feel so awful. And the old, yeah, physically and spiritually, mental, you know, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes yeah, a lot of sense. Exactly. My, my mom's been sick for God knows how, like a really long time. Like she just keeps getting sick, like just continuously, well over a month she's been sick. Yeah, I would say that's probably mm -hmm. ascension symptoms. Yeah. There are so. certain things that really help burdock root is really good yeah really good unfortunately I... most people they don't know things like burdock root or they don't even know that it's ascension symptoms so they go straight to the doctor mm -hmm. and then they get like a course of antibiotics or something yeah and that makes it worse mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. can i just ask since we're talking about music or frequencies and different things like that just in the beginning it makes me think of um I'm, i think i'm on q a mode sorry but um for those of us who have always had um been interested or either playing music learning music or music has been so special to us um does that speak to um experiences in past lives i mean is there a reason why that resonates so much as compared to somebody who doesn't a lot of times yeah okay. and then my other thing is um i suppose it's a little bit bit like being colorblind people who are like they might like the beat but they are so tone deaf i mean they they can't this is like thanks for playing it's like speaking yeah. another language or something. so does that what does that speak why are they so tone deaf what do you get for, with that what I feel like it was a challenge they chose to have when they came and it's actually harder to like elevate if you are tone deaf, even though they still seem to enjoy it. Like, oh, yeah. well, they're oblivious. They are, they're happy in their own mind. Okay. Yeah. 
usually. Right. I mean, and then they're singing in the shower and whatever. <laughs> but you know, some people try. God bless them. They they try. Yeah. So I just wondered what that kind of meant. Hmm. Well, they chose to be that way. And mm-hmm. I feel like it's almost like losing one of your senses. Mm-hmm. You know, so because everything is frequency and you know, energy. So maybe they see it in a different way. Maybe color is more prominent for them, Mm -hmm. but they do also sing really loudly. Yeah. Badly. (laughs) One thing I've noticed, you know, in my lifetime, and I really didn't do too much being, you know, let's say several generations ago, like in the school systems, which we won't go into in depth with school systems because we know there's an issue with all of that too. But yeah. um, It was always a fight. I mean, like if you didn't learn, you know, you had band. I mean, you started with flutophones maybe or the tri, you know, the triangles or whatever and and whatnot. And then at fifth grade, we got to have instruments. Um, And then if you were lucky enough, you lived in a family where they paid for you to go to piano lessons or something. Mm -hmm. But um, in the school system itself, that's as far as it went. And it might have depended on your school and how big and what was, (laughs) but what overshadowed that almost everything did, particularly sports. Sports mm-hmm. has overshadowed the arts for so long. And yeah. it's always been stuck in my craw a little bit over that. Well, it's kind of the gladiator versus mm-hmm. the frequency. Oh. You know, and they knew the frequency would elevate. So they wanted that pushed down while well, they wanted, you know, the gladiator mentality pushed up. And is that why a lot of people who are musicians or they're, they're, they got gifts, but they're struggling artists, you know what I mean? They're living out of their car, mm-hmm. they're working three jobs to try to make ends meet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been programmed in as well. Yeah, it's been designed like that. Like we're, we're just, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're taught that you just don't make a good living doing that thing. Um, but you do, you do it because you love it and it, it, it sings, it, you know, works for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, we've been programmed in so many ways. It's just, it, yeah, it's just so fascinating to think about that when you are, mm-hmm. everything's a program in, in some yeah. way or another. But whether we can be on the same pitch or not, we all have the ability. I mean, if we have a voice, I know there are some people who don't, aren't able to speak, but when you talk about um, meditation and chanting, the um, you know, the vibration that you get in mm. your body and how it um, affects everything. Right. Yeah. I think that's important too. And, ha- and the shame is another program that was used to keep us from doing music, singing, because a lot of people are worried about how, how they sound or what someone else is thinking. But regardless of if you're perfectly um, on tune or on, you know, or not, it's like right. everyone's body resonates at a different frequency. So maybe the off tune is perfectly where they yeah. need to be to harmonize and to elevate them from where they're at. So it's like, for example, I've been, a, I used to sing with my church when I was involved in that. And there would be frequent times where I'd be singing and I can feel that it's the right note, but then everyone's saying, well, no, it's off pitch, it's off pitch, right? So I think that had to do more with my body was like, no, this resonates with my body correctly but it's not resonating with the way that the instruments are tuned and the, yeah. So that's important to know because it can really diminish your confidence. Yeah. If you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm just not good at music. It's like, no, that's not true. It's true. you're just tuned differently. <laughs> that's a good point to make. It's a really good point to make. Mm-hmm. It's happened yeah. to probably everybody who's uh, been doing those kinds of things. Yeah. In the world of auto-tune, I feel like it's really important to not <laughs> yeah. be interested in auto tune and like the perfect everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, and because what is art? Art is not perfection. No. Like, mm-hmm. What is creation? Creation is not perfect segments. It's well, it technically sacred geometry, like right? it follows these perfect structures, but it does it in all of these unique, amazing, profound ways, right? Yeah. yeah. By the very definition, creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So auto tune is just like, I think it's a slap in the face to music itself. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. well, and, again, and again, like I, I can't, um, if I'm somewhere and I hear something, a music that has a beat, 
it's really hard for me not to try to move or, you know, whatever, you know, be happy or whatever. And I just don't, you know, there are some people who just sit there stoic. <laughs> they don't move. <laughs> you know, when I was uh, growing up, I sang in a lot of different things. Uh, one was a trio and we would go to these, um, okay, don't judge. We had Masonic Lodge, okay? <laughs> we would go and we'd perform for the Lions Club or the, the Rebecca ladies or whatever. And they all had my color hair. <laughs> they, they were older. They, I didn't know who they all were necessarily. But if we squeaked on the instrument or we kind of flubbed up, you know, we'd kind of giggle a little bit and they'd just be. <laughs> the only one in the crowd that was laughing was my piano teacher. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so people are funny. Yeah. Well, they're very uptight. And they're very uptight around art, music, and all these things. And I think it's because we've been told to be that way. Well, they disassociate too. Because yeah. music touches your heart. Music touches your whole body. And it makes you feel things. So people that are in survival mode, they, they don't have the luxury of feeling things. Yeah. So they just, they intentionally, I think it's subconscious actually. They just disassociate. Pretty much they just leave their body and they're like, oh, there's music playing. And they are somewhere else. <laughs> they are not even there. No. Well, and then it in interconnects with your other senses. Like, you know, um, the smell of baked bread. You know, and you might remember the music playing at that time or whatever. But I, you know, a song can transport you to that very place and that very time with the same emotion, whether it was happy or sad. Um, and, and it never really changes. I mean, no, through the years, the emotion is the same. Yeah. It's crazy. And it could be interpreted, interpreted any way you want it to be. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people will ask an artist, oh, what's that song about? And they will say, well, it's whatever you want it to be, you know, because that they have their own reason why they wrote it. But, and it's the same as any art, really. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. has their interpretation is true. Yep. So, so what's everybody's story with music? I was in band. Uh, you were in band. <laughs> yeah. um, I was in band. I tried to play guitar for a while. I love to sing, but I'd like to take singing lessons. I would really like to learn to use my voice better. And also it's very stuffy right now. What's stuffy? My oh. voice. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I did not know that, that you like to sing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was What's your favorite song? What's your favorite song to sing at the moment? Um, I like that Mama and Papa song. What's that called? The Mamas and the Papas. Um, Happy Monday. No. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> California Dreaming? <clears throat> no. It's not, is it? Yeah. It's well, got a lot of great songs. Yeah. But uh, we, it's about dreams. California Dreaming. Dreaming? No. Oh. Okay. Anyway, I'll think, maybe I'll think of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one I like to sing. There's, I haven't sung in a really long time though, so I'm not going to like break out and sing. But. <laughs> well, music was big in my family too. Um, yeah. I grew up with two upright pianos in our house. My dad had one, one was from the one side of the family and the other one, I think he rescued from a pool hall or a dance hall somewhere an old one that got repainted kind of um off-white with the gold you know I mean it had like seven or eight pedals on it and he did a lot of honky tonk he did a lot of that boogie woogie stuff okay and his his piano teacher actually because he um, had large hands and his his reach was more than an octave I mean easily she wanted him to meet Liberace and he had come to the to the big city which was an hour away from where he lived and they just couldn't get in there in time. So he almost got to meet Liberace. Now, I don't think that would have mattered, but you know, he was pretty, he was, you know, a good piano player and stuff. Mm -hmm. But so I took lessons with piano and I think I was playing more by ear than anything else. You know what I mean? And my, my teacher would just kind of not hold me to, to it too much. And I didn't really learn the classical stuff. I just, it just never resonated with me. But then I taught myself how to play guitar with a friend and I did a several instruments in band. But, and then the vocals were important too because I was always either in a trio or I was accompanying the chorus or something. So it was huge, you know, 
when you're out on your own, unless that's going to be your bread and butter, you don't do it too much. I sang for a few weddings. You know, I didn't get any eggs thrown at me or anything, but you know, you got to use it or you lose it. <clears throat> yeah. And which is super true. I mean, can I carry a tune? Probably pretty good, but not like I used to. So that I will admit to, but um, it's really, really important for me. And then in, you know, with what I do in my profession, um, in dentistry, don't hate me. <laughs> Everybody wants a good smile. Um, when you're, when you're sitting back and you're looking up, um, you're not looking at much. I mean, like, what do you see? Nothing much. So really your other senses are heightened, right? Your sense of hearing is one of those things. And like you said, David, you know, I mean, some people, or maybe it was uh, Ray, some people, they're just not wired or they're thinking of anxiety wise. I mean, the music doesn't matter. Extraneous, what it doesn't matter. But for some people, it's the one thing that can calm them. They can tune into something different. You know what I mean? So I feel like having the right kind of sounds around that will help people and soothe them. So that's been kind of an interesting journey. Yeah. I'm but, curious about David's background in music. Aren't you like, don't you like make music? He does. Yeah, I do. I kind of just started making music uh, February last year, I think. <clears throat> but obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, I was always in, mum, mum made me and my sister do piano lessons when we were younger. And my cousins and I, who are also, my mum's sister made them do piano lessons as well. And we used to sing for our grandparents, you know, every Christmas. Cause, so we could naturally sing, I suppose. But none of us were particularly amazing, although both my cousins did performing arts and drama and stuff and took singing lessons. Um, but it wasn't until like high school that I started to getting into playing drums and getting into, I was always into rock music, but started playing in bands and stuff. And that lasted for like six years. And then life took over, you know, and just kind of became an accountant and, and really focused on, on that, which was good and bad, but I kind of stopped doing music for like 10 years, really. And then I hit this this point when I was living in Melbourne where I, I'd, I'd started a business so I could have more time to do music, but the business was taking up all my time. And I had this big, I had a spiritual awakening and a and a identity crisis really. I lost my sense of self and I, I found solace in music and started taking singing lessons and playing drums again. And it just hasn't stopped since then. So that was 2017. And then finally started making music, but I, I kind of, when COVID hit, I, I made myself learn guitar. I could play a little bit before, but I was pretty terrible at it. And I got this, this course online, which I've been doing for the last two years or so. And now I just, now I do like four or five hours of music a day playing, you know, honing my skills and, uh, and, you know, recording. So yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's one of those things, excuse me, my voice is a bit more messed up. <clears throat> it's one of those things like, um, that I always knew that I wanted to do long term, but I just because of the starving artist thing and all the different programming I had and the not being not thinking I was good enough or you know the imposter syndrome or whatever it was, I just I just felt like that's never going to happen. It's never going to be um, at the level that I wanted to, you know, because obviously I'd taken ten years off too, and you've got all these people that have been doing it since they were kids and never took a break, and and how am I ever going to compete compete with those people? Um, but I don't think it, that's kind of the wrong mentality to have. It's, it's just getting started is good, you know, and then over time you find your, you slowly find your, your way. I think that if it, anything, for anybody that has a, a, a passion that they want to do, you're going to, you're going to make time for it. You're going to, you're going to progress probably faster than someone who's, you know, who didn't really, because it's what you came here to do. You know, I think mm -hmm. you, you will find a way, uh, I've got a lot more to achieve, but I'm quite happy with what I've achieved so far. It sounds like you're also on a healing path because you chose to do that. You're kind of listening to what you, your path is and in, and in that process is healing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's very, I think it's very healing. a beautiful thing to come back to the remembrance that music itself is not just for art it's not just for beauty it's essentially it's essential purposes for creation um but creation as far as like um 
it's a vibration that tunes things, music tunes things. So thinking of it like everyone has the right to use that medicine, that form of medicine, um, regardless of how good they are at it or, or if people like listening to them do it, right? Like it's not about performance. It's not about anyone else seeing or hearing it doing it just for our own benefit, our benefit. Like there's, I'm sure you've done, all of you have probably done this even subconsciously when we're like need to clear our throat or our something's out of alignment, we'll start singing or humming or whistling, right? And we don't maybe, or we'll put on the music, we'll turn on some music because we want to feel better, right? So yeah, I think taking away, it's become a business. It's become... You know, it's like the, the innocence of it just being for play, I think has kind of, we've gone away from that. And I think it's beautiful that we're kind of coming back. Like that for me, for example, I relate to David when you're like, you know, you want to do music, like you want to do music for real. And I really similarly am that way. I voice lessons since junior high and choir and jazz choir and band, but a little bit of drama. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, am I back? You're back. You're right. yep. I got a phone call. Hold on. Let me put it on. Do not disturb. <laughs> okay. Okay, do not disturb is on. So, um, <clears throat> and then I would just write a lot of poetry growing up just to express my feelings because I needed to. I have a lot, I had a lot of very strong feelings growing up. So getting those out somehow. Um, but the inadequacy, I've always dealt with that the inadequacy, not feeling like, oh, well, I'm not good enough at this part of it to actually like make it or so <clears throat> a few years ago, I basically was like, I don't want to make it about performance anymore. I'm just like, I always would record things for myself on my phone or write that, you know, just for myself. But then it became more like, oh, I'm actually going to do this to try to like therapize myself to try to maybe. So that's how I started channeling actually was when I just through free singing, free singing, just turned into channeling, um, turned into light language, you know? So yeah, music's really huge for me. Oh, I play piano. But by, kind of like Julianne, I played mostly by ear. I did take those piano lessons, but also was not, my teacher wasn't very strict. And I was also very much like, I hate learning the scales and the, oh my God, it was so stressful for me. All, uh, all good boys do fine. Or all <laughs> grass or whatever the heck it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like always loving music and always just being naturally good at it. Um, but, and knowing that at some point I'm going to be making music that goes put out there, but for now I'm content with, Hey, I'm going to post a little sound clip on my TikTok or, you know, on the telegram or send my friends a cool song that I channeled or whatever, you know? So that's where I'm at with music. Cool. It's, but it's something I, I use. They made it that way on purpose. Hmm? I think they made the, the learning of music that way on purpose. It's like anything makes you not want to learn it. Like I, I hated lessons too. And it's, they probably, they probably did that, didn't they, honey? Yeah. You know, they, they made it like this, this, this confusing, like it's so confusing and it usually can be very confusing. There are so many different chords, so many different scales, modes and everything like, but you don't need to know all of those to be able to make music and you don't need to, you know, yeah, I had it. I had a lessons. I did classical piano. You know, I I learned piano better when I when I was older. So I took lessons when I was probably like nine, and then when I was like thirteen, I someone gave me a giant looked like a map, but it was a all of the chords, and it showed all the dots of where you put your fingers to make each chord. So my ADHD neurodivergent brain eventually noticed a pattern that to make um, a minor chord. You arranged your fingers like each note, you, the, ba the note at, with your thumb was the note, the name of the chord. So E minor would start with the thumb on E and then you would go up like one and a half steps with the next finger and then one and a half steps with the next finger and that's a minor chord. That's not true, but that's an example. Um, I can't remember what the exact measurements are, but you do with major chords, there's like a different ratio. Right. Right. And then with like, 
you know, suspended. It just means this or one of the fingers goes up. Like, and then when you figure, mm. like if someone would have taught it to me that way, instead of just like, we're talking about like the regular scales way, then you can take any, you can be in any key and still figure out how to play the chord that you're trying to play. I don't know. I just, you're right. Okay. They, I, they intentionally made it more scales. confusing. Yeah. Same with scales. There's only one scale. When I started learning guitar and you guys would know if you've played guitar, right. you just have the shape of the scale and you can put it anywhere you want. And I was like, it's amazing. Like on the piano, you have to remember, I had to, remember all the different, it's like, okay, well, this is going to be at A flat instead of an F now. It's just like, it's just so confusing. And you have to memorize so many, like the major and minor scales, but you don't need to, if you just count it, you know, because it's going to be the same wherever you, you yeah. play it, but it just, yeah. We have different ways out there that I've seen even now, whether it's piano or guitar. So um, again, I think they're trying to put everybody in the same box and not everybody yeah. lives in yeah. the same box. Um, but when you were saying, Ray, about, like, first of all, two things came to me, helping the memory. Like how many times have people, when they're, they're trying to remember something for, to study, and if they put it to music, it's so much easier for them to remember it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, that, music, yeah. yeah. Did you guys see that video that one guy was like, music actually accesses the, I think the gamma waves or the, whichever ones are the subconscious of the brain, gamma, beta, I think I it's think gamma. Beta. He said music accesses like 10 times quicker, gets to the subconscious brain. So yeah. Yeah. And then when you were talking about um, medicine, music, I mean, music is just what they say, laughter is good medicine. Well, music is great medicine. Think of the people in the um, nursing homes. Um, or anybody, anybody who's on their last few days of life, you know, soothes their soul with some music. Yeah. Well, in the cathedrals, the mm -hmm. old yeah, cathedrals, the cathedrals, they used to have those enormous organs and that was all about frequency. And now they have all those different frequency devices that help you heal. Oh, the pyramids, that's actually one of the functions of the pyramids. They had, they yeah. had uh, little rooms inside that vibrated at different frequencies, different for different, um, you know, healing purposes. Yeah. It's actually quite rude that that we have to go and rediscover this all ourselves again. I mean, like what was old becomes new again. This is so wrong. It's just so, I, I love how music, okay. So like we're talking about the, the structure, right? Like the ratios, the ratios, cause that's the sacred geometry. That's the Fibonacci sequence, the, um, the golden ratio, all of that. Like it's all the same, you know? That's why when they say music is life, it's cause it's basically, and, and I don't know if you guys know this, but anything that is in motion emits a, a frequency, which is technically sound, right? right? So we, our bodies are singing, literally like if we could hear it, everyone would be this like chord of notes put together, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we all relate so much to music, right? Because it's literally the essence of right. creation itself. Who we are. Yeah. yeah and more and more you, you seen can... so go ahead <clears throat> sorry sorry have you guys seen that that uh somebody invented a thing that you can it's like two let's call them pincers and you put them on on plant on leaves of a tree yes. and it and it creates yes. a and a song so everything yeah i love they're singing they're there what they're yeah that is really really cool the, did you uh, see the one years ago someone did it played a disc from the trunk of a tree played it like a like a record <laughs> yeah. and it sounded like classical music it was just like <laughs> like it was so intense it was awesome wow that one, you should check that one out like cooler than the leaves i think because more intense yeah. not so soft and subtle it's more yeah they must have, they must have got the the idea for vinyl somewhere probably yeah oh yeah, yeah there's, there's videos out there too showing is it water or like snowflakes or different things when, when exposed to rock certain dissonant tones and others that you know have a good frequency and how they're aligned in that one and then the other one yeah, 
plates, the sand plates. Have you guys seen the sand plates? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's very interesting. Some people need a visual on top of that. Mm -hmm. Should we show that one picture? Yeah. So when did they, when did, when did they, we were going to start the, uh, we were going to start the, the conversation with that, with that. This picture. Yeah. Or the, the, the frequency, the, the 440, yeah. 432 or the, whatever it was before then. So, well, so let's look at this really quick and then we'll go back. Um, but think about the chakras and the different hertz that you need. And I can put this in the community tab too. Mm -hmm. I've been getting solar plexus is the most important lately, 528. And that 528 is like the best to play music through with that frequency. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like it's really complicated because they really didn't want people to do it. Yeah, I found a website that you can upload an MP3 and it switches the frequency for you. So you, you can do it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm having trouble doing it with my with my software. Yeah. So but yeah, as far as like, what have they been doing? The bad guys? Um, they I think they hijacked all the frequencies. So you have the frequencies of your phone, of your, you know, every frequency that's around you is the wrong frequency, bad. including yeah. the music mm -hmm. and the lighting is wrong. So oh, yeah, LED, yeah. Yeah, office, office lighting and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they kind of, so when we, when I go Media. about to solve a problem, I want to go at it from all angles. And that's what they've done as well. That's what the Greys did. They went at it from all angles so that they could try and get every single possibility covered so that there was no way to escape, basically. So we did pretty well. For people that have escaped the matrix, we've, we've achieved something quite yeah. nearly, nearly yeah. impossible. We, we should commend <laughs> ourselves. Well, we should feel like superheroes because we literally are. <laughs> yeah, mm. true. Yeah, we, we break out. I mean, there's so many people, the vast majority of people haven't, haven't, can't break out. They just yeah. can't. Oh, yeah. the other thing I wanted to share too was about the, the notes. So if you're looking to um, align your chakras just like really quickly, literally, um, a sim it's super easy. The, the root is C, you know, which is also the center of like the piano. Um, so you take the C and then you go up from those chakras and it just goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So if anybody wants to do a quick alignment, you can just play those notes and maybe hum them or, you know. Yeah, that's great. I think it probably does. It probably also, and the thing is too, I've noticed. So when I do my free singing, I'm, I'm not like playing a starting note. I'm just singing whatever is in my head and comes out. So I have no idea what key I'm in or what, you know, I have no idea. Um, but I think that's important to do because mm -hmm. I think your body will naturally sing in the key that you need to be in for the healing that you need. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with you there. That's awesome. I and it, probably, it helps a lot of other people too, yeah. because they may be going through the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking you start in the key that gets you to the highest note without straining yourself. <laughs> That's how I used to do it. <laughs> when, you, when you're listening to somebody do like our anthem is the Star Spangled, Spangled Banner, right? So if you're listening to somebody that you've never heard before and they're already starting way up high, you're thinking to yourself, wow. <laughs> okay. What, when they get to that, that uh, crescendo, cr crescendo, what's that going to be? Well, um, I think letting people change, like being okay with keys changing and tempos changing throughout a song. Okay. I think the way that music is right now is just so silly, like in a box, like everyone's making the same songs, just like rearranging the elements. I'm like, okay, come on, let's, you know, I, I mean, yeah, speeding things up, slowing things down, having a weird pause, changing the key, adding new instruments. Like it, it can be, it can be chaotic and crazy and it doesn't have to be so, you know, you know, when you say that, what it reminds me of is, um, okay, what am I trying to say? 
nowadays there's so much uh, more electronics and what I call synthesizers and things that like almost anybody could sing because it makes you sound good. You know what I'm saying? Or it play, it, it changes what you're doing. If you didn't have it, you would sound different is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And even in some of these performances that I see, whether it's on TV or whatever, I'm like, I'm not clapping for that. That wasn't great. I could do that. You know, and then my daughter's like, well, it's about, it's about performance. I go, no, it's about talent. And so then we'll have an argument, but did you see what I'm saying? Some of the stuff they've added to the mix has changed it completely. Mm -hmm. They've really bastardized it for music. Yes, they have. There was, uh, I don't like that. When I was, when I was living in London, I went to this thing called Hot Dub Time Machine, which was basically, I think it was a hundred, 50 or a hundred years of music. The mm. DJ played like a hit song from the top 10 or something like, yeah, something like the top 10 or the top 40 for every year. You know, he didn't play the whole song, but he played, you know, Clips a, good, a good, yeah, a good portion of the song. And when you got to about the 2000s, you could just see that the mainstream music just went, just went downhill big time. Yeah. It, well, it's just that quite was quite different. Yeah. Late quite 90s, it's like Britney Spears had come out, like all the stuff, you know, you know, before they were playing awesome, awesome songs and, you know, because yeah. I mean, like, there is something to some of the songs, like I, I just use Frank Sinatra as an example, but that era of music, there's just something about it to me. And it's probably because I remember it growing up. It's just more soothing and it just kind of lulls you as opposed to some of the stuff that kind of screams at you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's recorded different. Everything about it is different. And I know that generationally, we all have different things that we grew up with and we resonate with. What about the music? The, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say the music industry. I mean, if you think about by the 2000s, we had social media. Yes. The internet was in full swing. We had YouTube. We had it, it, the industry changed because people saw the opportunity of how they could basically capitalize on music, you know? So it became a big business, and most people weren't really singing from their heart anymore. And most people weren't writing their own music anymore. There were the, the real artists were the ones like writing the songs, you know, and even those people were being <clears throat> um, like basically told like, okay, you need to incorporate these key words. These mm -hmm. are the words that are going to grab people's attention. They're actually told what they can and cannot write. They have to um, include certain messages. And on top of that, yeah. I personally think that most music is tampered with and has um you know Subliminal. subliminal messages and yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure yeah sure. that's why if yes. you're gonna make music make it yourself record it yourself do everything yourself i think and even then you still gotta take precaution the subliminal thing is huge it's kind of hard to wrap your head around how that works mm -hmm. but um it's like anything right they've, they've weaponized it they've weaponized everything and yeah in, there was a video that I saw with, uh, especially because for gangster rap for that genre, they they used that genre of music and weaponized it so that they could fill the prisons the prisons with more with more people, mm -hmm. and because it's a business in the US, isn't it? So, um, and it's just insane. And the, the record companies they have a stake in the prisons too. So it's this big this big net this mm -hmm. you know, big web of of corruption and and money which is pr practically the, the whole world anyway. It's just, yeah. it's crazy how they've, and the artists themselves, they don't make, you know, they do all the work, but they don't get to keep the masters. They don't really make yeah. any any money until they sell us a, a certain number of million records. You could even sell 4 million records and not make any money, just the way the contract's set up. And it just, it just deters people for even wanting to get into it's that. It's because it's puppeted and manipulated for sure. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, obviously, yeah. obviously you can see what's going on there. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. uh, the lawyers make all the money, the record companies make all the money and, and even they write these crazy contracts. And obviously when you sign the contract too, you also sign away your soul is <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, slippery slope. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would just encourage people to try to take their perception of music and stop trying to make money with music for a while. To just literally focus on doing music for ourselves, for fun, for mm. pleasure, for healing, mm -hmm. and stop trying to, because it's been used for that for so long, it's like, 
if, if that intention is anywhere within you, it distorts what you're creating. I mean, creating for the pure pleasure of creation is what makes the greatest music, right? So, yeah. and we're moving into a time where that's going to be a big thing. That's going to be more of what our world's about mm. joy, creativity, and all that. Um, mm. What I have found too that's really interesting, um, I think most people have had this experience because we didn't grow up with music videos either, right? So if I've heard, you know, of course I used to sit by the radio and listen, they didn't have TV either. So the spoken word, I, I'm just saying to listen to a voice or a song is different than to watch them perform the song because then you're adding the visual with it. Um, and where I'm going with that is that like, maybe I like a song and then all of a sudden they, you know, I say, oh, they have a music video and I'll look at that and I go, that doesn't sound anything like the guy who I thought was singing that song. So I don't think I like that anymore. Or, you know, it kind of ruins it for me. Does that, you know what I'm saying with that? It yeah. just, sometimes a voice and a, and a face, just maybe they did do something to it, but it doesn't really match. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause, well, cause the video, the premise of the video, the little movie that you're watching along with the yeah. song. Yeah. It's brainwashy. Uh-huh. It is. <sighs> what about all those? So I'm tonal. So do you guys know about the different personality types? I've never heard of tonal. Okay. So there's tonal, digital, kinesthetic, and visual. Oh, yes. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So I'm visual. tonal. So it's all about sound. Like if I'm in a restaurant, I can hear everybody's conversation. See, I would say Very auditory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, auditory. Yeah. yeah auditory <clears throat> yeah i'm gonna write those down honey what are they tonal tonal kinesthetic digital and visual see i had to learn some of those meta programs when i was talking to people too mm -hmm. and like visual people when they're when you're asking them a, like when you're asking them a question these different types react different and yeah. like, like, for instance, yeah. a visual person, if you're asking them a question, what are they doing? They're oftentimes looking up, they're looking up in their file cabinet to grab the information. Mm -hmm. That was and one if that you I don't look them in the eye all the time, which can actually be very physically draining to stare at somebody in their eyes, yeah. then they think you're mm -hmm. lying to them. Well, and then of course, it was person. important for me yeah. because kinesthetic, are you kidding me? Like, oh yeah, this tooth feels rough. No, it still feels rough. You know, I'm like, <laughs> like kinesthetic. You need to go home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's they very, kinesthetics are very like lovey. They mm -hmm. listen to you. They actually will um, agree yeah. with you because they feel so much. So if you're really passionate about something and you're saying, we have to go do this, like say they're your, their best friend. Yeah. They'll say, oh, yes, I want to. And then like a half an hour later, they're like, oh, I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> it's an interesting thing how you can group people and their personalities into different things. But we're and you kind of born with this. We are. This way. And um, anyway, so I. I feel I like I'm all of them. Movie you movie are. Movie. Sorry. We all are. All of yeah, them. you are. You have, you have, a, you have a, a primary one, but then you have. You yeah, have, yeah. I know, but I'm like, I don't know. I feel very, very tonal for sure, but very kinesthetic as well. Because you use words like "I feel," "I feel this," or you know, a, a visual person will say, "Do you see what I'm saying?" And a you know, auditory person will say, "Do you hear what I'm saying?" Mm -hmm. and things like that. Oh yeah, I said does that makes sense, or do you feel that? Yeah, I say feel a lot. Yeah. yeah if you say so, feel, I say feel as well, quite a lot. Yeah. I do too, but I'm, I'm a little bit kinesthetic, but I'm mostly tonal. So tonal is my main thing and tonal and digital are similar. So it's, 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 audio, it's called auditory digital or something, isn't it? It's called auditory um, digital, I think. Yeah. Digital wasn't in my wheelhouse. It was something else. I can't come up with it, but describe the digital to me a little Digitals bit. Digitals are sensitive, but they don't want you to know that they're sensitive. So when they get upset, they just like go to their ivory tower. So, and tonals just like, are like, oh, you, you said this about my dress. I'm just going to die. You don't love it. You know, like, do are you going to divorce me? 
<laughs> so those kind of things like tonals take it too far and digitals they're like i can't deal with it so i'm going to go live in my ivory tower and i'm right oh you know hmm. that's the digital it's that's kinesthetic. the worst side of the digital but otherwise i mean they're pretty cool but it's that part that's really noticeable would kinesthetic be like all up in their feelings about it like hurt and like feeling like ugh, offended the ones are, they're gonna sit down in the chair and put a blanket over them and they want the hot cocoa and well, yeah. and they're your best friend immediately. Yeah. The kinesthetic, yeah. they understand everything. They feel what you're feeling. But a lot of people don't understand that when they walk away, the kinesthetic like lets it go. So I think it's I'm just kinesthetic. Part of your pers personality. Yeah. I want to take a quiz now. I'm going to have to go do that after this. <laughs> I'm quite visual too, but. Um... Yeah, yeah the visuals they want you to look at them in the eye and talk to them and <laughs> i'm tonal so once i get tired of looking straight at somebody then or i don't really agree my eyes will go to one side like they'll just kind of oh. <laughs> and it might depend on the day and like you say if you're high energy or if you're low vibing and you're tired you might you know yeah morph into a different place more but i so. can feel like my energy drain away as i stare at somebody <laughs> like it starts to go so huh. it just it really just depends on what your energy type is yeah hmm. but we do have two usually but yeah. one's dominant and if you're good at it you know i mean when you first meet somebody or you're even in a whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or a small group it takes you a matter of seconds really to kind of figure out where they're at mm -hmm. and then then you can really um, improve your conversation quite a bit or like if you're trying to convince them of something or you're approaching them on a certain level you kind of can approach them on that level and it'll be more effective yeah but it takes a little bit of work it's a little crazy but i, say I was gonna this. say oh. as a tonal i just hate the um and hate's kind of a rude word but i just cannot stand the scary movie tracks oh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're so bad, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they <laughs> well, they're disturbing your auric field. They're very, they're intentional. I hate horror films. I yeah. hate it. I hate it so much. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It hurts. Like hurts. Like oh. yeah. Like mm -hmm. got the jack chalkboard. And my mm -hmm. husband's visual, think? so he he doesn't. He's not bothered at all by it. Huh. He's like, it's all fake. It doesn't matter. I'm just getting lost in the movie. <laughs> like, I can't stand to yeah, watch. It's this not fake. Movie. So many movies are real. So many movies are real. Some do of you, them are you guys ever, not quite there yet. Do you guys ever watch Hostel? Hostel. You, ever see Hostel? This. you saw it? <clears throat> what was that about? The one where they're on the trip and they basically get stuck in this. You can tell it. Yeah. Basically, they there's two. I think there's three, three movies actually. It's all the same thing. So it's usually a group of uh, college kids or something. They go to a, a a town in somewhere in Europe, Bratislava or something like that. And usually one of them gets kidnapped and it turns out that they've been kidnapped by this, this torture for hire business that basically kidnaps people and then people pay a shitload of money to torture these, these kids and kill them in the end. Uh, and you could just so tell that that's real. <laughs> oh, just, absolutely. It was disclosure. So I basically was their vacation turns into a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, oh, it's horrendous. I happen to see. But it's not even paranormal. It's just like, no, it's like real rich, like guys that basically come in there and they don't want them to see their face or they wear, they wear masks, but they're basically these rich, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's so bad and when you know when you know that kind of thing actually goes on it's just the tip of the iceberg i would say but it's still yeah. it's still bad yeah so don't watch horror movies right now no, i no. Do want to say something else about frequency about um how our ears actually pick up you because you're talking about tonal our ears actually pick up more photons than our eyes I just recently learned that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but also when it comes to sound, your ears are not the only thing interpreting the sound. Your whole body 
is feeling it and interpreting it. Um, and also partially because the, you know, the body's made up of water and, you know, vibrations carry it through water, blah, blah, blah. But I just think that's important for people to know, like, to just keep that in mind, your whole body's affected by any sound, any frequency. It's not just like, you know, even if you're putting it in your headphones, it doesn't matter. It's still resonating through your body. Um, but that also makes it extra, extra powerful for healing because mm-hmm. you can play a tuning fork and literally tune your entire body with just ding, yeah, one little yeah. ding. Yeah. yeah. Well, then there's the timber, the timber of your voice, you know, for people who are hard of hearing or they've got their hearing aids or whatever, um, you know, certain levels, they just cannot get. And if you have, you know, it's not about shouting. It's not about being extra loud. It's just being in the right range. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it makes and it makes you uh, makes you wonder about the media because that those those frequencies and all the the things that they show you them because the colors and everything will be off the charts bad for you I'm sure I don't know I can't I don't listen know exactly what it is but it's sneaky like, frequencies they have in the news well especially well, we should, the west I was gonna say we should mention for people watching um, there are quite a few crystals that will balance those frequencies or like make the eliminate those frequencies i mean that's important for people to know there is things you can do it's not like we should all get rid of all technology like there's ways Mm -hmm. that we can yeah yeah and also the dragons too they will they for example they've been really coming in helping guiding people lately like being assigned to each person um so you can ask your dragon guide they can clear your technology and they can like balance the frequencies and dragons Mm -hmm. can do all that stuff so could you explain that further when it comes to like you've got your technology in your house and if you've got it on is it you're talking about a certain like the angel frequency that that 4096 or whatever is a good clear something like that that you would uh, start yeah and- you can actually play a frequency, <clears throat> frequency but you can also in your mind just ask your dragon guide to restore balance you know go through the house and clear all the tech and do a sweep through you know i asked my dragon to do that especially lately there's been so much glitches in the technology lately so i've been extra yeah. just like hey please just be on call if i'm on the, especially when i'm on one of these calls mm-hmm. so which crystals do you guys recommend i i know um hematite is one shungite shungite and um, yeah that's the shiny black, black. Hormones, even and tectite is good too yeah. tectite is good as well Organite's really good though. Like if you have the conglomeration of the metal and then the crystals and then the shungite and it's called elite shungite, elite. it really helps. Yeah. I could cool. tell as soon as I got that thing, cause the Wi-Fi is on the other side of this wall. Immediately the room calmed down. Oh, good. So yeah. just by saying elite shungite, that means it is organite along with all that other stuff. No, that the, that's one of the stones in that oh. pyramid. Yeah. But it's the one that absorbs the EMFs and all the, it really does change. Mm. And it's a much more inexpensive way to go about it. And it's not about the size of the organite, uh, the size of the pyramid, whatever you've got. I don't think it has anything to do with the size of the crystal. No. Organite is the metals are conducting, like they're conducting the energy in there. And that's why, like, I met someone who came into my store when I was a manager at a store and I had Organite next to the computers and he was not a good person. So he was basically part of the dark side and when they get close, when like reptilian types get close to that, they freak out and it's because they can't handle the frequency. Mm. So yeah. everything he could do to get out of there, he got out. Did he, sh- did he start shape shifting? No, he didn't. Uh, <laughs> his eyes changed color though. And I forgot his name immediately. You know, wow. I want to mention too that we can call in the energy of a crystal, even if you don't have the crystal. Let's say you don't have the finances to go get the crystal. You can maybe just say the name of the crystal 
and focus on the energy of it. Um, even if you don't, even if you haven't done the research, like to learn about it, just like focus on the name of it and just feel into the name of it and allow that to resonate within your system and just ask the crystal itself to, um, to basically like lend you its, its healing powers, right. Um, in the highest good, but it will, even if it's not present with you. Yeah. It's all about intention, isn't it? It's all about yeah, intention. And because we have all of these crystals in our body. I mean, they're all in our, we are all composed of the same crystals that exist in the earth, right? They're just tiny, 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 tiny micro crystals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Just when you think you knew it all, there's something else that's going to blow your mind. <laughs> Well, and that's how you can re- do remote healing and how you can, you know, it's the same thing, basically. Energy. Yeah, right. Energy. Bottom line, frequency, music, all this creativity, it's going to get its glory days. I mean, it's going to work. It's like a blossoming. It's coming to fruition now. So that's going to be glorious. It's going to be wonderful to look for that. I'm so excited when we're going to have enough free time to gather and like start Mm -hmm. choirs again. Because imagine how many people would see a choir if they had time to. And if it was like, you know, people miss that. So many people I talked to were like, I used to sing choir. I don't really sing anymore. I really miss it. Like, that's like a common, like, you know, now we're just going to have time. We're going to be able to just do it for fun. And it'll be community. It'll be so much more parties. There'll be people doing all of this celebrations. Yeah. Yeah. Drum circles, interpersonal relationships, and just, you know, out of love, everybody that remains is going to be at that certain level or higher. Well, someone said in the beginning, you guys were asking about past lives and music. And it, if you're wanting to also get in touch with past lives or channel information about past lives or activate that, or even activating psychic abilities, um, doing free singing, drumming, uh, even just tapping beats, anything like that, you can basically, your body will naturally tap into the most familiar and impactful songs and rhythms that it, it can, t- can remember from your soul experiences. So you can actually activate memories of, and, and you can call in these pa- pa- aspects of your higher self um, with music too. Even if you're not a like, trained musician it doesn't matter it's just if you're in it with your heart and you're doing it you know out of purity of your heart so mm-hmm. i love that so, um, currently okay so currently for the most part there's so much of our music that we've listened to over the years and we've liked our songs had our favorites but much of that has been at the wrong frequency correct um, I was trying to figure out, I mean, I've heard of certain ones that purposely tuned to a better frequency, and I had gotten that John Lennon was one of those, that Jimi Hendrix, Bob Marley, Prince, to, to name a few, had done their music in better frequencies. Does anybody know of anybody else? I think Pink, Pink Floyd, maybe too. It was interesting. Yeah. Um, because the Beatles, I think the White Album was recorded in 528. At least one of the albums was recorded in 528. There's something weird the, about those guys, the Beatles. But the interesting are. thing about the Beatles is that the, the Beatles were created, you know, on purpose for uh, not good reasons, you know, for right. to, to further the agenda. So I wonder, I wonder why they did that. You know, I wonder if they, you know, and obviously John Lennon, because he was very, you know, just before he he got shot, he he did this interview where where he he talked about. He's. I feel like there's this group of people that are controlling the, you know, the control, you know, the controlling the world, and you know, people are going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but this is. And then he got shot like a couple of weeks later. Yeah, he was trying to disclose. Not long after. Yeah. Yeah. So was he? Was he? These these people were obviously very. uh, And I'm actually reading right now the 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 story about well not the story but the theory that that Paul McCartney was replaced because he died the original one died in an accident and I, I do think that's true. I get a yes on it's, that one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. Um, they're different. They're different heights for one, one thing. But um, you know, did did John Lennon like? Did they all? Because they they obviously weren't super mind controlled. Because John Lennon, you know, had his free thought, and they kind of, you know, what I mean. I feel like they have to fight to pull out of it. Once mm. they get stuck in there, 
but a lot of them do like they do fight it and pull out of it and they they see the really right. yucky part of it and they don't want to deal with that so mm. they try and get out like, of it like eminem i think he failed at getting out well yeah he didn't get out yeah he yeah i don't got think taken. he got out <laughs> yeah so that was going on from day one. I mean, from years and years ago, but don't you think it, oh, yeah, it, was, it kind of kept getting stronger and stronger, more and more. It's gotten, it's the gotten more worse, yeah, more way worse. Wise. Yeah. <clears throat> look at Rihanna, you could, any big pop star like Rihanna, uh, Ariana Grande, you look at their film clips, there's, there's symbolism all over, all, over, all over the place. Not to mention- and it's not even, it's not even hidden. It's not yeah. even hidden. You, there's devils in there and <laughs> like, it's crazy. Not to mention, then you add the twist of, you know, um, hermaphrodite, or if one was really a, a, a female was really a male and a male was really a female, and all that mm -hmm. gender stuff is opposite. Well, it's, yeah, funny, we talked, it's funny we haven't really talked at all about um, uh, jingles and advertising oh, you know good. there's there's mm. no it, it's not a coincidence that every company is like required to have a jingle because if you have a little tune i, I bet all of us could probably sing 10 at least right now that we know mm -hmm. that it will probably always exist <laughs> yeah. in our minds forever mm -hmm. they will that never go away a wiener song <laughs> yeah awesome. yeah yeah crazy I don't want to sing any of them because we don't need to perpetuate those those frequencies. Right. But well, in a way, it's kind of like I said. If you're trying to remember something, you put it in a song. Yep. What is it? Yeah. Is it so much easier for you to remember it? Well, they used That's to have how... initials that were so short, the brain couldn't compute it. Mm -hmm. But then you would still, the subconscious would still get it, so you'd still go out and buy it. And that was like in the when they first invented tv and their commercials are just like super short oh i want to say something I feel like it's important that i was wanting to say a minute ago i think we all need to be very mindful right now especially on amazon these big companies that are releasing these new tech products for example like the alexas and the echoes and they're like uh basically giving them away for practically free like there was one time they gave away these like uh alexa homes that were like a hundred and something bucks for like twenty dollars for like a limited time and they're like they, they want <laughs> it's like i i want people to see through right like why would they be giving something so cheap why would they want everyone to have this in their home we have to ask ourselves these questions and be mindful about what we're, you know what I mean, purchasing and like what's behind what they're doing. Why aren't people, uh, maybe they are realizing, but you know, you just were thinking or scrolling or maybe you were talking to somebody about a certain product and all of a sudden it pops up on your phone mm -hmm. without you doing, mm -hmm. without you purposely looking for it. Sometimes you're Hello. thinking of it and Hello. it pops up on your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's an AI, there's a, there's an AI consciousness actually, um, but there is a good side of the AI consciousness that wants to move forward with new earth and like work together with us. Right. Which right. is what we're focusing on. Um, but there is AI consciousness. And like honey just said, it, it's tapped into our thoughts at this point. Like it can actually read our minds at this point. Like, you know, when you're searching something on Google, like, okay. Um, our dog's allergic to da, 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 da. And then you read a little blip and then your next question is like, okay, well now I need to know if I can make it with this ingredient. And the, that question will be listed next because it, no, it's like, it's picked up on our, <laughs> the patterns of <laughs> that we have, you know, and the way it, it can predict like yeah. what we're going to think next. It's so cr crazy. Creepy. Yeah. Yep. I'm so ready for all that to kind of end to just be done. Mm -hmm. yep. What else did we not cover? I don't know. I feel like we got a lot of stuff in there. We did. I was We're kind of like all over the place, but that's what it's kind of like a little coffee chat about the coffee. Do you guys have any final thoughts? <laughs> no. I just love music and I just say, um, you know, enjoy what resonates with you you know yeah. be, be mindful of what's going on but go out and create your well, own 
that's yeah. what I feel like just mm-hmm. that's going to be the entertainment of the future local fun music mm-hmm. so yeah. not only music but art <clears throat> all the arts are going to be back in fashion like that's all going to come back with like a, a vengeance I'll say mm-hmm. um so start enjoying it now Honey, would you say that um, it goes to more of an acoustic version of things? Are the um, the microphones and all that kind of stuff, is that going to be mostly, going away? I'd say mostly. Mostly acoustic. Yeah. We'll still have amplifiers and stuff right. like that, I feel like. But it might be a little different. Yeah. I feel like there's, in a while it'll be more acoustic and more natural. There's going to be a lot of new instruments created. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That'd, be, that'd be cool. And there a lot are, of old because... ones will be brought back to <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. like the xylophone and the zither and all those crazy there's, yeah i feel like there's going to be a period where people are going to go back to wanting to make their own instruments so there's going to be a whole wave of like ooh, handmade this handmade this flutes and 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 just all sorts of because people are going to have Basically, because our creativity has been stifled for so long, um, it's going to basically like a huge wave and people are just going to be creating things left and right that just for fun, just for play, just, yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's going to be great. Perfect. Yeah. And we won't have anything hypnotizing us anymore. No. Right. So. Gosh, this was kind of fun to talk about something. I like. I'm going to put David's music channel underneath. That'd be awesome. So you guys oh, want to go subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks, well, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.